right, good morning. Welcome to a lovely Sunday morning for Make Bean Scottish Fitness. I'm heading out to do something fun. Just trap shooting. I got a buddy who goes to the club, so he invited us out here. I'll see if my shooting skills have still kept up to their top level. How you keep your shooting skills at a top level? Go shooting. So do that in the army. I was expert with the AR M16. Right, the M16, not an AR15. M16. Okay, something actually made for a military, where the AR15 is something made for civilians. Right, it's not a weapon of war. Might get in trouble with that, but uh, that's a fact. But I'm out there shooting the shotguns and having a good time with some friends. Some things you just have to do. Work hard all week, sometimes you need to play. Even comes down with fitness. You know, you're in the gym, lifting hard all week, come the weekend, it's time to play. Time to have some fun. Time to enjoy some of the activities that you're able to do because you are in good physical shape. You know, because you have done steps to get yourself in better physical shape. You don't have to be a bodybuilder, you don't have to be a power lifter, you don't have to be a strong man, you just be somebody who's got themselves in better shape by spending time in the gym or going out for walks or yard work or however you did it or have a home gym. And I really give those a credit that have their own gym and consistently work out. Because it's easier to go into a gym itself and you're going to work out because there's peer pressure. Yeah, you walked in, you're not there to socialize out all that. You know, I do have a gym at home. I have weights outside. The problem is a lot of times when you have the gym at home, you have your other things that are going to be distracting you. You know, family members, the TV is available, the Xbox is available, the refrigerator is there, you know, books are there. There's a lot of things that distract you from it, so a lot of times you can get distracted and not do it as well as you should be able if you went to a regular gym. But when I did start getting into severe fitness, I did that in my 30s. I mean, I worked out three hours a day, six days a week, three on, one off, three on, one off. It was like clockwork. I didn't miss. I had my meals planned out, and I ate a lot of food. And I had my workouts planned out. I'd write them down. These are the sets I'm going to do. These are the weights I'm going to do. These are how many repetitions I'm going to do. And I got great results. I probably at the time was maybe 7 8% body fat. I was ripped. I wasn't physically strong in the bench like I am now in some other areas. But my endurance was fantastic. And I had an injury and I had a second injury, not in the weight room. Yeah, I threw my back out hiding soil for the wife. <clears throat> and then when I, after six weeks later, I tried doing some uh, rows and I re-injured it, not as bad, but then I just, I didn't lift for years. And I still regret that, but it is what it is. And it took me looking at a picture when we went to SeaWorld and then also just taking a really good look at me, realized just, how bad my my fitness got. You know, I went from really being just shredded to, you know, drooping shoulders, drooping chest, belly. I was like, nah, nah, I'm not going to accept this. I'm not going to accept this. You know, people said, oh, you look fine. The wife goes, oh, you look fine. And I did not look fine. So I got the weights back out and I worked out at home. Same thing. Now, it wasn't three hours, but it was about two hours. 
12 hours a day, five or six days a week. And I'd come home from work and I would live for two hours, eat, and then go to bed. And I noticed I started getting stronger. Same thing, I wrote everything down. These are the sets I did today, these are the sets I want to do tomorrow. These are, I had a whole week planned out and I stuck pretty close to it. And then I said, okay, I'm going to go up five pounds on this exercise. You know, I'm going to stay at this extra, this, this weight. And I mean, I really had a real science to it. And once again, I, I got great results. And then, a friend of mine goes, well, you should compete. I said, well, I'm not doing it for competition. Because now nah, you'd like it. So he signed me up for one without telling me. And we went out and competed. I won my first meet. That was a... Uh, it was a fun time, but a lot of people that I still talk to to this day, and that was back in 2010. So then I started competing, and I started lifting heavier. But I, I stopped writing everything down. I'm just going to start pushing weights. I can kind of remember what I did the week before. And just see where I can go. And I still got results. Now, being honest with myself, would I get better results if I wrote all this stuff down? I think I would. Because it's it's something you're looking at all the time. Yeah, it's a reference. And it's also somewhat of a motivational tool. And I just picked me up a couple of extra notebooks, so maybe I should start doing let me know in comments. I just keep doing what I'm doing. Just getting into the gym and lifting. Or should I start writing everything down? Start doing it like I did in the past. See if I can push it to the next level. Inquiring minds want to know. So that's on, on motivation. You know, you have to sit there and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. going to sit there and just make a goal and I'm going to make a plan to get to that goal. So right now recovering from my injury let's see if I can turn this a little bit more there we go my goal is to get back to 405 and then once I get to 405 I'll reset my goal to get into competition for me. I know there's a competition in November what I got to look at is exactly what is it and am I going to be in the shape I want to be to compete I think I did 397 last time I competed so if I think I can go and do better than that then I'll probably go do the competition it's not like I need any more trophies or any medallions or whatever I got more than I'm ever going to showcase. But it's, it's good to kind of keep your name out there. You know, if you're going to have a fitness channel and you talk about competing in powerlifting, you need to compete in powerlifting. My opinion. You know, unless you're retired. But in this sport, there's people in their 80s still competing. And I'm impressed. They're, they're the ones that have impressed me. And they're, they'll, they'll be 20 years older than I am now. And as much as I may impress the 20, 30, 40 year olds, that 80 year old man or woman impresses me in the same way I, I probably impress them. And that's my goal. I want to be doing this into my 80s. So how do you, how do, you do that? You never stop. You just keep doing it. So, that's my thoughts on that. Now, this will be part one. I got a good drive, so I'm going to think of a few more thoughts, more subjects to cover, and kind of share that with everybody. I appreciate the support from everybody. Remember, sleep, nutrition, exercise, hydration, safety, and 
just getting the gym and lift. Just go outside and enjoy the great outdoors.